Welcome to another episode of Breaking Bad Photoshop Habits, my little mini series on ways we can work more effectively in Photoshop. I'm Dave Cross and this time around I want to talk about another bad habit and that's not working smartly. Not working smart, not taking advantage of the smart capabilities of Photoshop. So anytime you see something that has the word smart in it, particularly smart objects and also smart filters, it's just a better way to work because it gives us the chance to change our mind, reuse the same settings, see how we do things we've talked about in previous episodes, but it's just an, a simpler way to work. And let's start off by talking about filters because in the past we used to apply a filter and once you clicked OK, it was pretty much done. Now one solution was to duplicate the background layer and then apply the filter to that copy. But then the problem still was if you came back a week later, you still didn't know what settings you used. All you had was a backup plan. So let's take a look at the difference here. Here's my background layer. In the past, I would have duplicated it and then applied some filter. And let's just do Gaussian blur for the sake of argument. And what would happen is you would look at this and kind of go, mm, I don't know, and try and decide and eventually kind of go, well, I guess I'll go with that and click OK. And then if you wanted to, you could lower the opacity of the whole layer and get kind of a neat effect. However, if I save this, even if I save it as a PSD file, if I come back to it later on, all I see is a blurry layer. I can't tell how much I blurred it. I can't edit it. So my only option, which is OK, it's better than nothing, I suppose, is to delete that copy and do it again. But let's compare that with doing it the smart way. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that to mean you need to be smarter. I mean you need to use smart filters and smart objects. So what I do is I go to the filter menu, convert for smart filters. That turns this into this smart object. And now when I go to do the same filter, nothing else has changed. The difference here is I can basically just click OK because I know over here on the layers panel it's going to show me you have applied a Gaussian blur. And here are all the things I can now do with that. I can hide it completely or I could double click on it and tell what settings that I use and adjust them if necessary. Over here on the right hand side, if I double click on this, it brings up blending options which are pretty much the same as what you get in the layers panel, blend modes and opacity. So in that previous example, I showed you how I lowered the opacity of the entire layer. Here I just lower the opacity of the filter right in here put it back for now. And then this is a mask. So here's another cool idea is the ability to mask the filter so it only appears in certain places. So if I take my brush tool, let's get a more regular kind of brush here. And wherever I start painting with black, I'm saying don't mask. I'm saying don't filter these areas. Now a very common way I'll use this is to deliberately over blur like I did here so I can really see the effect. Now that I've done some masking, I'll double click and adjust either the amount of blur and or the settings in the blending options like lowering the opacity. So now I have all these options, but the other thing to realize is that even though I didn't duplicate the layer, I'm not doing anything to the former background layer because it's now a smart object. So if all else fails and I look at it later on, having saved this as a PSD and I come back and go, yeah, I don't like that at all, then I can just delete that smart filter and I'm right back to square one. But here's the other part that's interesting about this is you can apply that smart filter from one image to another. So here's how you do it. The other image I want, say I want to apply that same filter and be able to edit it. And what's kind of interesting about this is that you can't, at first glance, it doesn't look like you can drag and drop if you try and drag and drop just the smart filter. So the trick is if you change the window to tile, either horizontally or vertical, doesn't really matter. Now this right hand image has to also be smart. So I need to go in and tell it to convert for smart filters. Now I come back here and this is the one part that's kind of well, counterintuitive is that you would think if you wanted to drag the smart filter over here, you'd have to click on it, but actually you have to make sure that the smart object itself is highlighted. Now I can take the smart filter and drag and drop it over. And you'll see when I look at this one, there's that smart filter. Now, in this case, the sizing is completely different, but that's okay. Let's get out of 
tile mode for a second, and all I'd have to do is come in here and free transform and say, well, I really need the mask to be this big. And actually, you know, to be honest, of course, we would probably just repaint the mask because it's a completely different shape. But in this case, it's not a bad thing to transform up because it's uh, just a blob of paint, so it doesn't really matter. But the main point being, if you've applied several filters to this smart filter, you can drag them all over and they're still editable. And that's the big difference of doing the smart way of using filters than the not so smart way. Next time we'll talk even more about what smart objects can do. We've kind of touched on it a couple of times. This is getting us started. Next time we'll talk even more about the smart way of working using smart objects so we can start breaking those other bad habits. See you next time.